We are continuing a walking tour of York, England, taking you through the little back lanes. Hope you've been watching part one. This is part two, continuing along with York Walk. In this walk, we start out with the Shambles, perhaps the most famous medieval street in all of England. We are walking with Warwick Burton, who's been leading walking tours of York for 23 years. Well, we're now entering a street called the Shambles, and this is Big Shambles, that's Little Shambles, which was the street of the butchers. And you'll see in a minute that there's no butchers left on the Big Shambles. It's the street of the knick-knack shops now, but there is still one butcher surviving on the Shambles round the corner here. But let's go down a little further where I can explain the origin of the word. Shambles is York's most famous street, usually very crowded, but you're seeing it at its best this evening. It is once the street of the butchers. There's the butchers' guild hall. In all the twisting and turning we've done around, you may have not realised we're actually now only 100 yards from the cattle market. Finkel Street, Hornpot Lane, Swinegate, they're just over there. So the cattle and pigs and sheep from the market were brought down here for slaughter, where those people are going. I don't think they're going to be slaughtered as we're going down there shortly. And you'll see that that snickleway is very narrow. That's so the beast shouldn't struggle as it went to its death. They then dragged the carcass out into the street and lay it on these benches, which in Old English are called Fleisch Schemels. And that has got corrupted to Fleshemels and then to Shambles. So the Shambles are literally the meat benches. And so you'd cut it on the meat benches hang the meat up for display and sale on the hooks and tuck all the blood dung and offal in the road. So you'd come down here slipping and sliding around in blood and guts and say what a bloody shambles because that's where the expression comes from. And meat was still hung up here for display and sale right up till 1939 when I think the outbreak of war put a stop to it. Now in the 18th century they began to cut, bang the, cut back these overhanging over overhanging upper storeys so as to let more air and light in and to reduce the fire risk. But this had the unfortunate effect of exposing the meat hung on the hooks to the slops being tipped from the chamber pots of the upstairs windows. So they had to put these little roofs over to protect the meat from those filthy substances. Now earlier in the walk I did say I was going to try and avoid losing you. But this is the point where we do what the book calls the shambles in and out, which is where we weave in and out of five snickleways in rapid succession. And you've got to try and keep up with this. And knowing how litigatious you are in the States, you are now hereby warned that there are nasty bollards or poles in the middle which you could easily walk into. And while I have public liability insurance, I have no responsibility for all the, any death or injury or damage to expensive equipment that might <laughs> result from going down these snickleways. In other words, take care of yourself and don't trip. So we're going to weave in and out of five snickleways in rapid succession and end up at the bottom of the shambles on whip ma wop ma gate. Well, here's the fun of walking along in the little side lanes. Instead of just strolling along the main street, we're taking a right, going down the alley, taking a left, taking another right, taking another left, and getting a bit confused, turning around, and finding our way back to the main lane. All part of the fun of the back lanes. These little detours are something you would probably not notice when you're walking along the street. You might see an alley and you walk right by it and you think nothing of it. Or even if you're studying a map, these tiny lanes are not on the map. You have to be with a local guide to figure out where you're going and follow along, zigzagging five little back lanes and bring you back to the main street. It's a good lesson in general when you're traveling, you're walking along, you see a little alley, it looks like nothing, but hey, it might lead to something quite interesting. So go take a look. And don't worry if it gets a little dark and narrow and stinky, you're in a safe place, you're okay. We're in St. Crux Passage. You might wonder how on earth York had so many churches. Can you see there's one here and there's one just up there, one on every street corner. Well, in the Middle Ages, York was a big city with a population of about 20,000 and 50 churches amongst 20,000 is 400 people per church. Now, this Snickleway is called St. Crux Passage and it has a very odd numbering system. It has one A and one and a half. 
and it leads down to this incredibly named street called Whipma Whopma Gate. Now Whipma Whopma Gate has nothing to do originally with whipping, it was Whitna Watna Gate, which means what a street. Call this a street, because it was York's shorter street that had its longest name. So let's go down and have a look at Whipma Whopma Gate. And here it is written in full. York's shorter street because it stretched from the litter bin to the delicatessen and it was as wide as from that wall to the black bollard. So what a street, call this a street. Well now we've got a few more snickleways up our sleeve unless you're too tired to continue or ready to drop we've got room for a few more. So we're now off to Black Horse Passage which lies over here. It's called Black Horse Passage and it was black by name and black by nature because in the 19th century this area behind you was an area of slums, it was an area of crime, poverty and vice. And this Snickleway and its continuation was a shortcut from Fosgate and Warmgate with their 28 pubs in a row to other places that lay down here. Again men were nipping down the back to avoid being seen. So the more respectable inhabitants who lived behind us had these big brick walls put up so they couldn't see or hear all the naughty goings on down Black Horse Passage. Though as you go down you'll see some of them were peeping toms because they put little windows in to look through. So how old would this alleyway be? In origin it'll go back to Viking times. It'll be a thousand years old but as you see it now it's, it's mid 19th century. It's like most of them, it goes back a thousand or more years but rebuilt, rebuilt, rebuilt. Oh yes, I've done, this is the third one today. Oh wow, so is this your full time occupation? It is, yes, it's the third walk I've done. The morning was Saints and Sinners of York and then this afternoon I did a tour of the Minster. So yes, it's my full time job and I employ other guides to help me as well. Is this your company? Yes. Oh great. I'm the boss. Very good. What it counts. Yeah. <laughs> Well this is Lady Peckett's yard and you'll be shocked to know that Lady Peckett was respectable, the only respectable woman on the walk and she was wife of a Lord Mayor of York and she lived in the brick house at the bottom here. Now it was York custom in those days in the 18th century that he was Lord for a year and a day but she was Lady forever and day so the Lady Mayoress kept her title for life. Now then, the shambles was narrow but this is narrower and you can imagine that if the two houses overhung as much as the one on the right they would touch eaves which means that somebody could look in your bedroom this far away and watch you getting dressed. Not much privacy, not much air or light would get into your house and the stench from the street would be kept in and what's worse is if fire broke out it would rapidly leap across the street and burn your neighbour's house down. So in, in 1644, after the great siege of York in the English Civil War, the building regulations were changed and all new housing or repairs had to be a brick and straight up without the overhang like the one behind you. Now as we leave the Snickleway you might like to turn at the top of the stairs and look back down because it's a most picturesque view. And you'll have noticed I'm sure by now that each of the Snickleways has a lamp in it, an, an, an imitation gas lamp and these are provided by the York Civic Trust and they mean that the Snickleways are actually very brightly lit at night and actually quite safe to come down. Anyway we're now going to leave this the last but one Snickleway and as I say do turn and look back it's a most picturesque view down the hill. Well we're now very near our finishing place and we're going to finish by the fountain but if you want the loo please don't use the fountain use this this is the public lavatory which is rather rudely known in York as the as Splash Palace. Well now we're now going to head up past the Church of All Saints pavement with its handsome lantern tower which in years gone by had a lamp fixed in it to guide travellers into the city through the marshes and forests that surrounded York. And I'm now going to divide you into two groups for the last Snickleway. I'm going to send the gents down that one and the ladies are coming down another one with me and perhaps you'll never meet again, who knows, you live in hope. So the gentleman down there, 
the ladies with me down this one. It's yet another back alley in our adventure in York, England, exploring the little snickleways with York Walks. Surprisingly, they link up. Who would have guessed? And the le gentleman might like to look at the one the ladies came down, call, which is the narrowest of the York snickleways, which is known as Introduction Lane. I said it's said that if you came down it in opposite directions, you could get closely acquainted. <laughs> The one the men came down is called uh, Thief Lane or Trickster Lane after the sharps and robbers that lurk down there. These snickleways, if you've not realised, are in fact the alleys of Viking York. The, if you've been in the Jorvik Centre, which I think many of you have, you'll have realised how disgustingly dirty Viking York was, with narrow alleys running between thatched houses running with sewage. And these snickleways are the descendants of those alleyways. And this is why so many of them have these Scandinavian names. And were you to dig down here, 10, 15 feet, you'd find the Viking levels like they did at the Jorvik Centre. It, the ground has risen and the snickleways have risen with them, if you see what I mean. So these I, snickleways have Viking ancestors many feet down. Well, we're now almost finished. We're just going to go around the corner to Parliament Street where we shall finish near that fountain. The city of York is England's finest example of a medieval town, so well preserved that it's become one of the world's most interesting historic cities with a rich mix of activities for the visitor. And most of the historic center is a pedestrian zone, which is very important for peace and quiet. There is limited access for cars, but on the whole, uh, they're free of cars, so it's very pleasant to walk around. And has it been a revolutionary success? Everybody happy about it? Well, not everybody. The taxi drivers didn't like it, but on the whole, it's improved the city centre so people realise it's actually done York a lot of good. Uh -huh. Well, now, we've now finished. We're now only two or three minutes walk from where we started. There's the Minster. There's Finkel Street. You spent the whole night going round in circles, getting nowhere. The furthest we ever got from where we started, which is three minutes walk away, was Lady Peckett's yard, three minutes that way. So, two hours to go nowhere. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the walk round. Uh, a light-hearted look at York, and if you have, please recommend the tour, and perhaps you'll come back on one of the other tours that I do. And if you've looked at the leaflet, you'll see there's walls tours, uh, and all sorts of different tours on offer. The final thing I've got to do is to, apart from making sure you know where you are before I leave you, is to write out your Snickleways certificates to prove that you've done the walk. So if you'd like to come to my desk here, I shall uh, write one out for you. So we'll start with you on the left if you, if you want one. Well, that's it. We've completed our walking tour with Warwick Burton of York Walk. But if you really want to see the real thing, you have to go there and walk with Warwick because you'll never figure it out on your own. These little alleyways are too twisting and too complicated, but so much fun. So it helps to have a very intelligent local guide and York Walk will provide it for you.